Pastors, theology students, and congregation members who are attending the Prophecy and Fulfillment of the Old and New Testament Seminar, it is nice to see you. My name is Park Su Sung, and I'll be your host today. For about eight months, Shincheonji Online Seminar Series has been giving detailed testimony regarding the prophecies and fulfillment of Revelation along with the overall content of the Old and New Testaments. These seminars opened the eyes of the believers from around the world and gave them clear knowledge about the Bible, which proves that God and Jesus are with Shincheonji. Since then, many people around the world have been continuously signing MOU with Shincheonji as well. Do you remember Shincheonji's 100,000 graduation ceremony in 2019? It shocked the whole world. Other denominations and even the media from around the world have shown great interest in it, surprised by its scale. We also expect more than 100,000 people to graduate our education center this year, which will be a historic moment for all to confirm that the truth can only be found in Shincheonji. Today, with Chairman Lee Man Hee of Shincheonji Church of Jesus with us, we will receive the testimony of God's promises, the covenants written in the Old and New Testaments. Let us first pray together before we begin today's seminar titled Prophecy and Fulfillment of the Old and New Testaments. Our Father God, we thank you. Precious pastors and believers from around the world have gathered to this seminar to receive the testimony of your promise written in the Old and New Testaments today. Please open up the heart of everyone who is here to receive the testimony of the truth, the word of life, and the word of the covenant given through the chairman of Shincheonji, who is a promised shepherd who came in the name of Jesus. Please let this be a time of sealing your word deeply in their hearts and also add your great grace and perception so that they can be guided to the kingdom of heaven, salvation, and eternal life. We believe that you'll be with us every moment, and in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Everyone, what do you think is the reason that it is only in Shincheonji which accurately testifies to the Book of Revelation's prophecies and their reality without adding or subtracting? It is because Chairman Lee Man Hee, who is a living witness and promised shepherd, who has personally seen and heard the fulfillment of Revelation, is with us. Chairman Lee, who is testifying to God's word today, is the one who has personally received and eaten the revealed scroll opened in Revelation 10 by the angel, and he is the one and only promised shepherd and Jesus' messenger whom God and Jesus sent according to the Bible's promises. Hence, today's testimony is not that of any man, but it is a testimony given by heaven and the true will of God written in the Bible. I ask that you open up your hearts wide when you hear these words and have a precious time of becoming one by the truth and in the words of God and Jesus. Now, let us welcome Chairman Lee Man Hee, the promised shepherd whom Jesus sent for the churches. Let's welcome him with a big round of applause. Greetings. To all the pastors from each denomination, nice to meet you. I am Lee Man Hee of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Today, I would like to share the word of God's promise with all of you. 
And we are all believers who have hope in heaven. I will be sharing the Word of God today. But before we go over the Word, I will introduce myself first. I have never attended a seminary, nor have I ever been ordained a pastor. I just believed in God. If I tell you what motivated me to believe in God, no one would believe me. Therefore, I will stop talking about it. So what I want to testify to is what I have heard and seen. Pastors, you have carried a long life of faith, and I believe you know the Word of God well because you have been testifying the Word of God for a long time. However, if there is anything wrong with what I testified to, please let me know. What I want to talk about with the pastors today is about the prophecies and fulfillment of the Old and New Testaments. As you know, God created everything in the heavens and the earth, and He gave all things to Adam to rule over. However, one of the created beings the serpent, deceived Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve turned away from God and even all the things God gave to them. Satan took possession of all the things they had received from God. Due to this incident, God had to leave the world of His creation. If that's the case, who was it that controlled this world and led it? It must have been the devil who has been controlling over Adam and Eve. However, as this has continued to this present day, Satan has been ruling over the world for about 6,000 years. And God who left has not yet returned to the world of his creation. However, God has sent many prophets to tell the truth and worked to restore what was lost, but it had not been completed yet. So let me tell you about the prophecies of the Old and New Testaments with you today. After Adam's sin, God appointed Noah, then wiped out Adam's world. All that was left was Noah's family of eight. The world of Moses existed because of Noah. However, although Moses has been working, Because Moses was also born with Adam's genes, he is considered a sinner and not a perfect, righteous man. Right? If we take a look at the world of Moses, there was King Solomon, and Solomon was the king of Israel. Solomon also sinned like Adam. What sin did he commit? All of you know what the first law of the commandments are. It is to have no other gods before God. Just as Adam worshipped other gods, Solomon also worshipped foreign gods. That is why it is said in Hosea chapter 6, verse 7, that Solomon sinned, just like Adam. In this way, the world of sin has continued to this day. 
Then, when we look at the time of the first coming in the New Testament, Jesus is the one who came, as it was promised and prophesied in the Old Testament. Jesus ate God's scroll in Ezekiel chapter 3 and came. Isn't this recorded in Matthew chapter 15 verse 24? This is how Jesus came according to the promises of the Old Testament. But did the pastors of that time accept Jesus? They did not accept Jesus. Jesus is God's Son, and God was with him. However, the pastors of that time did not accept Jesus, and furthermore, did not accept God, and eventually killed him. They killed Jesus saying he was a heretic, the prince of demons. Jesus, who was killed, died after prophesying his return and the work that will take place when he returns. I am sure all the pastors know about this already. Then, when will he return? Jesus who left 2,000 years ago, when will he return? In what form will he return in? Will he come in spirit or flesh? Isn't this so? Yes. But what I want to share with all of the pastors today is regarding this content. Because Jesus said and fulfilled the prophecies of the Old Testament at the first coming, and because he did fulfill the Old Testament prophecies, he said, it is finished. In a bigger picture, what did Jesus fulfill? Jesus ate God's scroll in Ezekiel chapter 3 and came. And we can see this in Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Jesus was the one who ate God's scroll. When he was told to eat the scroll to go and speak, who was he being told to speak to? Wasn't he told to go speak to the rebellious house of Israel? And Jesus, who ate the scroll, testified to the rebellious house of Israel. They were not willing to listen, nor did they listen. Wouldn't this be the same content as Ezekiel chapter 3? Yes, this was so. But Jesus, on the other hand, took away the sins of the world. He took on the sins of the world and died. But Jesus dying wasn't all. He prophesied things to come in the future, as seen in the four Gospels. One of these prophecies is Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 23 was an event of that time, and Matthew chapter 24 was an event that would take place at the time of the Lord's second coming. This was one prophecy. Yes, this is the case. And what else did he prophesy after he died? He prophesied the book of Revelation. So since the prophecies in Matthew chapter 24 of the four Gospels and chapters 1 to 22 of the book of Revelation were prophesied, shouldn't these all be fulfilled? Then only when the prophecies fulfill, one can believe. Yes, this is so. However, I have spoken about Matthew chapter 24 once before. But this person is not speaking from what I have learned from someone, nor am I speaking from what I have studied and learned. What I am speaking in regard to is what I have seen with my eyes and heard with my ears. Yes, this is so. 
But today, we see the animals. Animals in the old days may not have seen the things of today, but even the animals today see the present day things and live and die. In the same way, even today, there is a person who sees and testifies the things of God. This person has been recorded in advance in the prophecies of the New Testament. Yes, that is so. So now that I have told you many times, and some of you may have heard it many times, but I would like to tell you about the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 to 8 is a summary of what was seen after seeing the events. And all of you will know the beginning of Revelation when you hear it. It starts in Revelation chapter 1 verse 9. Did this book of Revelation, which began in Revelation chapter 1 verse 9, really begin in Revelation chapter 1 verse 9? There is also something that is not the case. The reason why is because in Revelation chapter 1 verse 9, you see that John was chosen. John was chosen, and up to verse 20, Jesus comes in spirit and spoke through John. However, as Jesus spoke through John and John spoke, he saw the seven messengers that Jesus had appointed. Because the seven messengers are the seven lampstands, they did the work of a lampstand, which was to prepare the way. So the seven messengers that Jesus appointed were the ones to prepare the way, and they sinned as well. The seven messengers were appointed, the Nicolaitans, Satan's pastor, came in. He gave Satan's teaching, ate Satan's food, and sinned with them. Those of you who have read Revelation chapters 2 and 3 know it well, don't you? They sinned. But how could the seven messengers, who were supposed to convey God's will, receive the teachings of Satan from the Nicolaitans, not God's teaching? Do you know what food was given to them, pastors? Do you know what food it is? Isn't this food recorded in Revelation chapter 17 and 18? The wine of adulteries. Yes, this is so. By eating this, they sinned and even committed sexual immorality with the God other than the Holy Spirit of God. And because of this, although Jesus appointed them, they have committed all kinds of sins. Jesus brought the seven stars, the seven spirits to earth, and with them appointed the seven messengers. But they committed a sin. So what should be done next? As commanded, letters were written. After the letters are written, he was to, told to come up here. But this person did see the seven messengers. I just didn't see them being appointed. This is what I saw in this book of Revelation from the day I was born. I also saw them in real life then. I know the faces of the seven messengers, and I even know their names. I do, because I wrote the letter. It's not my own opinion. Jesus commanded. So I know their faces, their names, I know everything. Are they dead or not? They are alive right now. They are alive. There were one or two who passed away, but the seven, in general, are still alive so far. 
This is going to be fun content. What do you think is fun? The fact that I know what they look like and even their names. And that letter was written by me to them. So I would know very well, right? Who would all of you like to ask regarding them? Wouldn't it be better to ask the person who has lived with them and spent time with them? After this, what's recorded? He heard the voice from heaven that said to come up here. So, of course, he went up. And however he went up, he went up and what did he see? He saw God's throne and God's organization. He went up to heaven and saw God's organization, his throne. So, of course, didn't see the face of God, but I saw the great throne of God and all the activities of the kingdom of heaven were like lightning and their voices sounded like thunder. Why is that? What do all of you think? The place where it was prophesied that this book of Revelation would be fulfilled is the throne of the kingdom of heaven. Isn't this where God and Jesus are? the angels, and the four living creatures. Here, it was prophesied that this book of Revelation would be fulfilled. Today, the book of Revelation begins with the seven messengers being appointed. And to fulfill this, it was already written in advance. And because it will fulfill, how difficult and great of a work it must have been to fulfill. So, must be so busy trying to accomplish this. What the throne prophesied, that is why it is said that activities in God's throne is like lightning, and its voices are like the sound of a loud thunder. Then, fulfilling the prophecy is a huge work. What did Jesus say in John chapter 14, verse 29? Didn't he say, I have told you now, so that when it does happen, you will believe? Yes, this is so. For people to believe when it is fulfilled, the prophets prophesied in advance. And those prophecies will fulfill in Revelation chapter 4. That's why they're so busy, really busy. However, should the people of the world be complacent before this time and today when the book of Revelation is being fulfilled, do you think heaven is cheap and worthless? It is a place of eternal life. Heaven, eternal life, and to go in front of the presence of God. I truly think it is because of complacency. Then the heavens are so busy and working like lightning to fulfill prophecy. And even after knowing all of this, shouldn't we get our act together and put an effort to do well? Yes, this is so. Then the question of whether we believe or not is to believe that the seven messengers who prepare the way have been appointed. Whether they have sinned or not, we must believe. We should also believe that the heavens are so busy doing work. Then God has already written down this content in the book, and it is fulfilled as is. So, was only chapter 4 seen up in heaven? Chapter 5 was also seen. In chapter 5, there is a book in God's hand, and he had a book sealed with seven seals. 
But will there be anyone there who will open these seven seals and look at this book or not? There's no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth that can open the scroll. Why would have this person cried? Who was the one that cried when they went up there? Can all of you see this man crying? Think about this carefully. You must come to your senses, whether you're a pastor or not. Anyone who has faith and has the heart to go to heaven should be alert. That one book is the secret of God's kingdom of heaven. And it is a book that must be fulfilled. If no one sees or opens this, wouldn't it be impossible to fulfill this? Isn't that why he cried? But one of the elders comforted me. Do not weep. The root of David has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and fulfill it. So it says, that he has triumphed. Then, to overcome would be a qualification to be able to take the scroll and open the scroll. If that's the case, then it wouldn't make sense if you do not win. As we see in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, it has been said seven times to overcome. To overcome. To fight overcome who? Have to fight and overcome the Nicolaitans, Satan's pastor. With what do you fight and overcome with? You may have seen it in Revelation chapter 12. Need to overcome with the blood of Jesus and the word of their testimony. Who we need to fight would be the group of the dragon with seven heads and ten horns, right? You have to fight them and win. Yes, this is so. Overcome seven times. What will be given if you overcome? It is conditional. If you overcome, it will be given. It's conditional. So pastors, if you overcome, how many will you receive? Some of those things aren't a kid's joke, are they? It is a huge fact. If that's the case, and you do the work of overcoming, you will receive what is promised. But if you don't overcome, you will not receive. So then we have to make sure to overcome. First, the kingdom of God cannot stand. Isn't it only when the kingdom of God is established that God can come or not? As long as you say, God, heaven, and amen, are you going to heaven? Everyone, what do all of you think? This person, I didn't hear it like this. Yes, this is so. I had to sacrifice my life. My life. Jesus takes a scroll. The scroll that was in God's hand. In how many years? After 2,000 years. It has been 2,000 years since the book has been recorded. All of you, please think about it. At that time, John, a disciple of Jesus, has died and is no longer alive, right? Calculate from then until now how many years it has been. It's been 2,000 years. But today, 2,000 years have passed. Didn't it say that Jesus, the Son of God, overcame the world at the first coming? Then with that kind of victory, Jesus took the scroll, opened it, opened all the seals, and fulfilled all that is written in it. Isn't this so? Whatever it is, it must be done. Even for what I have shared up until now, God is in the heavenly kingdom, not in this world. Isn't this the case? Knowing this position and situation, this is how we should approach the word. So Jesus opened this book and began to open the seals one by one in Revelation chapter 6. What comes out when the seals opened? A white horse and rider come out, doesn't it? So when the seals were opened one by one, up to six seals were opened. 
the seals. So the book is almost opened, isn't it? The last seal, the seventh seal, is opened in Revelation chapter 8. Each time the seal is opened, the book is opening, and each time it is opened, the reality written in it appears. It means that the realities of the prophecies, not just the prophecies, appear. However, Revelation 6 is about the four living creatures appearing and judging. And who will be judged is what we need to know. They are not the enemy, those who belong to Satan. It is the people who claim to believe in God with wrong beliefs and incorrect actions. These people are the chosen people, the chosen people who believed in God, and these people were dealt with. So how? Lastly, the sun, moon, and stars darkened and they fell, all of them. Who did the sun, moon, and stars represent? The nation of Israel, as we see in Genesis chapter 37, verse 9 to 11. Isn't it the family of Jacob? If so, the sun, moon, and stars mentioned in this book of Revelation today is the sun, moon, and stars that belong to the sky, the family of heaven. If we see that they are all gone, then, doesn't this mean they have all been ended by God? Yes, the chosen people, not the opposers, but the chosen people who believed in God. Haven't we seen them in chapters 1, 2, and 3? This is the end of it all. Then, they belonged to heaven, fell to the earth, so they returned to the flesh, kicked out of the sky. This is what happened. Chapters 8 and 9 now explain where those who have been kicked out went and what happened after that. It will be explained. We need to know that the judgment in chapter 6 is the judgment of the chosen people. If I had to explain this one by one, I would have to spend more than one hour on Revelation 6 alone. There is no time for that right now. So I'm going to give you the summary. Then the chosen people, who have been called the chosen people of the world, have known incorrectly and has clearly put to an end the world of faith. If that is the case, then all the sun stars have gone dark and have fallen, so there's nothing left in the sky. Do all of you understand? We need to stop boasting about our faith. It is not right to show off your faith while carrying the burden of sin. You should look at the Bible and then speak. This Bible is unchanging. In John chapter 10, verse 35, it is said that the scriptures cannot be broken. This is what is said. And the one who received this word is called a God. But didn't the Bible say that it cannot be broken? Yes, that is right. With this fact, we should not sin before God or commit such an act, actions, or testimonies to others as well. Now, the chosen people are all finished in chapter 6. If that is the case, then there's not even one who is in God. But that doesn't mean the devil's worlds will disappear, right? Yes, this is so. You must not have flattering beliefs. The truth must be told as true. Then, there's chapter 7. In chapter 7, all the winds of judgment are held back and all stopped. Until when? This was done so that the wind may not blow until we have put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. 
isn't the wind blowing from chapter 6. The wind blew because the four living creatures came out to judge. But the winds are being held in Revelation chapter 7. All stop. But there is a period of time. How many? Hold back the winds until you seal the 104,000. That's what it means. After sealing, even if the winds blow at that time, it was set in stone to prevent the wind from blowing before then. And when it comes to sealing, on whose forehead is it? Seals the 104,000 in chapter 7. And looking at these 104,000 in Revelation chapter 14, the number of people who have been harvested for the first time is the 104,000, the 104,000 on Mount Zion, everyone. Isn't this the reason why we have carried out our life of faith to go there and receive salvation? Isn't that so? Isn't that the truth? If so, then at the first coming, Jesus sowed the seed of God and the devil sowed the devil's seed. Where is this recorded? It's in Matthew chapter 13. However, it was the 104,000 who were born of God's seed, the ripe grain harvested, and sealed these people on Mount Zion. The 104,000 are the sealed 104,000 12 tribes in Revelation 7. There were 12,000 from each tribe, which is why it's 104,000. So whether these people are lucky or unlucky, these people are sealed. And they belong to the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes. Then, weren't the 12 tribes referred to as the 12 tribes in physical Israel? And even in Jesus' day, were the 12 disciples referred to as the 12 tribes? It is to end all the worlds that are being created today and to newly create the 12 tribes at this time of recreation. It doesn't happen to anyone. One must be sealed. What does it mean to be sealed? It is the Word of God. We do this by engraving and stamping these words of God on our hearts. This new covenant is the content of the night of Passover in Luke chapter 22, verse 14 to 20. The new covenant, this new covenant, the words of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. This was done as a promise, the new covenant. Because this is what takes place in the book of Revelation. As we read in Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 to 10, it was said that the blood that Jesus shed 2,000 years ago, God's kingdom and priests, have been purchased. Isn't the kingdom and priests the 104,000 12 tribes? They are. People say all kinds of things in their own way, in this way and that way. But the Bible does not change. They were purchased by the blood of Jesus and made to be kingdom and priest, the 104,000. These people were. So the people did. And these are the people who have been harvested and sealed. Then, harvested and sealed. But the harvest is not just done. It is not just taking anyone, but must be born of God's seed, right? It doesn't mean that those who are born of the devil's seed will be harvested. Those born of God's seed, yes, the church of Jesus. As we see in Matthew chapter 13, verse 24, in the field of Jesus and in the church of Jesus, didn't it say that the two seeds the seed of God and the seed of the devil exist in one place. Until the time of harvest, yes. At the time of harvest, only those born of God's seed, not those born of devil's seed, are harvested. In that case, 
Those who are born of God's seed are harvested. Yes, to who is it that those who have not been harvested are born of? Two seeds were sown. So these are those who are not born of God's seed. Pastors, please remember these words just once. Please, just once. Please remember these words just once. Two seeds were sown in the church. However, only those born of God's seed were harvested. Yes, those who remain were not born of God's seed. Please, remember these words just once. Please. How great would it be if there were many people going to heaven in your church? Don't forget this one thing. What I said now is not what I made up. I am just speaking on behalf of what Jesus has promised and said. I am just being an advocate. So the number of those who were sealed was 12,000, 12,000, and 104,000. Then, whether the world believes it or not, whether they know it or not, God is doing this work. He is doing this work. If so, yes, the 12 tribes were sealed with 12,000 each. What will happen next? If the 104,000 12 tribes were sealed, then the Great Tribulation will occur. Yes. That's how it is. The Great Tribulation will happen. What will happen when the Great Tribulation occurs? Which one is bigger, everyone? Is it when a couple of tribulation occurs in some countries? Is that a Great Tribulation? How great of a tribulation it must be if the tribulation occurs in the entire world. Isn't the present time like this? The coronavirus itself is covering the whole world. There has not been a greater tribulation than this since the beginning of the world until now. So in Matthew 24, didn't it say that there has been no such great distress since the beginning of the world until now? Isn't it like this now? We should admit to what is true. Yes, this is so. But strangely, at this time of great tribulation, there are people who come out of this tribulation. They come out. It says that they have washed away their sins with the blood of Jesus and became a multitude in white. The first is the sealed 104,000, and the second is the multitude dressed in white coming out of the Great Tribulation. So what do all of you pastors think? Now is the time of the Great Tribulation. And now the 104,000 are full. And then it is the time of the Great Tribulation. There are people who come out in this time of Great Tribulation. And I have heard that there are probably many people coming out all around the world. However, we're also hearing that there are now 70 churches in our country coming too. Yes, to all the pastors who are with us today, what do all of you think? As it says, if we want to be part of the great multitude of white, we have to come out at this point of tribulation, right? Where? Before God. Yes, we have to come out. Will you be saved just staying where you are? Now, those who have been sealed have already been sealed in each church. And the number is 104,000. And now is the time of Great Tribulation. The multitude white must come out. When the multitude white comes out, they enter the kingdom of God together with the 104,000. Then the pastors will have your own judgment and thoughts about this. Please think about it. What I think is that only the sealed 104,000 and the multitude of white coming out of the Great Tribulation are those 
who will receive salvation at this time of revelation. I am saying that there is no one else who will receive salvation. There isn't. But if you are saying, oh, not me, not me, does not mean that you belong to God from belonging to Babylon. This isn't it. Belonging to the kingdom of demons does not mean you're belonging to the kingdom of God. So you have to know yourself and you have to know where you are. Yes. I will tell you one of the four Gospels along with these words I just shared. Yes. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 11 to 12, it says there, the subjects of the kingdom are thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And those from the east and the west are seated in the kingdom of heaven. This is what it said. Who are the subjects of the kingdom? I believe that the subjects of the kingdom are referring to the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of the world. They are the original descendants of the nation to which they belonged as the kingdom of God. These people are traditional churches. These people insisted on only one thing about their traditional church, and they did not get harvested. These people were thrown out, and in Revelation 13, weren't the people of the tabernacle of heaven also thrown out? Were not all the people of Jerusalem thrown out in Matthew 24? And in Matthew 24, the destroyer stood in the holy place, and Jerusalem was destroyed, and there was not one stone left at that time. Jesus came with the angels and sent them east, west, north, and south to bring each person. Isn't this so? Yes, it is. So if you read verse 29 and on, you'll find that. Matthew 24. So the subjects of the kingdom have come to an end. And those who have been harvested one by one from the east and the west are seated in heaven. Why is it called heaven? Heaven is where Jesus is. Isn't heaven where God is? Then belonging to God, belonging to Jesus, is called the kingdom of heaven. That is what it is. If that's the case, then today where the prophecies have fulfilled according to the Bible, the pastors who have hope in heaven, you must be sure of your judgment. There are no lies in heaven. Threatening doesn't work either. Judgment must be done right. Yes, this is so. So Revelation chapter 6 ends, and chapter 7 begins the work of a new creation. Through the work of sealing, it is all destroyed, all came to an end, and the sun, moon, and stars also darkened and fell. In chapter 7, how it begins in this chapter is by harvesting, gathering, gathering, and the 12 tribe leaders sealing 12,000 in each tribe. After this is over, a great tribulation will occur. And from this tribulation, the multitude of white will come, one by one from the east, west, north, and south. And this is what God wants to accomplish. But when we go to chapter 8, the seventh seal opens. And what happened there? The seven angels receive the seven trumpets and blow the trumpets. What does this trumpet say? It is news to inform you of what has happened. It is a sound that announces of what has happened. So it was the sound of the people who were kicked out in chapter 6 to be sacrificed in chapter 8. And it was also the sound of who they were being sacrificed to in chapter 9. This was called the sound of a trumpet. But six trumpets have been blown, and one remains. Six of the seven trumpets are blown in chapters 8 and 9, and one remains. 
And at this point, chapter 10 is this book in the hand of God. But what kind of book is it now? Didn't Jesus take the book from chapter 5 and fulfill chapter 6 and 7 already? Yes, he did. But here, Jesus opens a book and fulfills it, brings the open book to John in chapter 10. And John takes the book and eats it to prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. If that is the case, anyone in this world must learn the new word from this person who ate the book. It's a book from heaven. It is a book in the hands of God. The book was given to the angel by the hands of Jesus. After Jesus had fulfilled it, the angel gave it to John. So the book is now in this man's stomach. Not in the hands of God, not in the hands of Jesus, not in the hands of angels. Then the person who reads this book should listen to the words of this book, right? These words recorded in this book are the secrets of the kingdom of God. These are the words of revelation to be fulfilled. So the one who has this book, long ago, even at the first coming, Jesus ate the book of Ezekiel 3 and came to deliver it to the people of Israel. It is the same today. However, according to the Bible and according to God's will, we must hear from the person who received the book and from the person who witnessed this work in the location it fulfilled. Isn't that when it is possible to know the reality of the fulfillment of the book of Revelation? Pastors, please think about this, whether it is like this or not. I wish that the book of Revelation did not come true. I don't know if anyone would have this thought. But God is fulfilling the book of Revelation. Yes, this is so. So now, the book of Revelation has been received and also received. The read like a measuring rod in chapter 11. However, after receiving and eating this book, Satan's pastors worked a lot to kill this man who worked hard to create the 12 tribes. Isn't this so? So I went through all of this, I've been sacrificed, and there are things like this, but after all these storms have passed, the last trumpet will now sound in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Yes, and what would happen next? What happened when the last one of the seven trumpets is blown? The kingdom of the world becomes a kingdom of God. Before it became the kingdom of God, it was a kingdom of the world. Although the thoughts of the world and everything in the world were together, now, at the last trumpet sound, the kingdom of the world will become the kingdom of God then wouldn't this be nice? Isn't this so? All the churches around the world believe and acknowledge everything this man testifies to. But here in our country, they woke up a little late. Woke up a little late. Why? They were too busy persecuting. So they didn't really think about these words. But now, gradually, gradually, as they have started to understand the word little by little, their mind has changed. So, there are some who are first and some who are last. But didn't it say that there are many people who are last that will become the first? There must be a good reason why. And there is. So everyone, now, regardless of whether I believe or not, I truly think it is necessary. We know the truth of God's Word, at least this book of Revelation and its fulfillment. What do all of the pastors think? Do not all of you think the same? We have to think about this book of Revelation for a moment. 
The prophecies are recorded in the book of Revelation. And when this prophecy is fulfilled and the reality appears, all the recorded entities will appear. Wouldn't this be something you can see? You can even touch it. Yes, this is so. People who don't believe because the reality has appeared here, people who don't believe in the fact that there are realities of this word and can be touched, what do these people believe in then? Jesus is also the person who is the reality of the prophecies of the Old Testament. Doesn't 1 John chapter 1 say that? It was Jesus. In the same way, even today, when the prophecy of the New Testament revelation, reality actually appears, all entities recorded in this book will appear then. One belongs to God, and the other belongs to the devil. And one is a betrayer. This means that the three beings were entangled And this is the incident that took place in this book of Revelation. It's in this incident. Yes, this is so. Now that we reach chapter 11, how can we not go to chapter 12? In chapter 12, we see a woman. A woman trying to give birth. But the dragon, with seven heads and ten horns, stood in front of the woman. And he said, just wait and see. I'm waiting to devour the child. Indeed, it is so baffling. But just because of this, the baby in the womb can't stay in the womb, correct? The baby must be born, doesn't he? He must be born. However, it is baffling. This is how the child is born. So the woman gave birth, gave birth to this baby, and it said that this baby is a male child who will rule all nations with an iron scepter. So he went up to the throne. The throne of God is where God dwells. But now this dragon has to devour this child. So what happens? A war broke out. A war broke out, and the brothers of this male child fought and overcame the group of the dragon. With what did they overcome? They overcame with the blood of Jesus and the words of their testimony. To testify, you are like this and this, you are Satan's organization, and because you have done this, you are the organization of betrayal, and so on. They won with these words of testimony. What will happen from then on? There will be the kingdom of God, there will be salvation, and there will be power. That is why in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, it is said to overcome seven times. To overcome, winning is very precious. If you win, the world of Satan will end. It ends. God's world will reign after 6,000 years. The tables have turned. Why? Because it originally belonged to God. So that's winning. So in the end, the group of the dragon must end. The group of the dragon will be seized and locked up in chapter 20. It will be over. So, if there's one thing we need to know here, this book of Revelation is a food of eternal life for us to eat. So receiving the word of revelation from the person who received and ate this book of revelation is the food at the proper time. It is a food of eternal life. But Satan's food is a wine of adultery in Revelation chapter 17, 18. This is the fruit of good and evil. Did it say that all nations was destroyed by the wine of adultery? We see here that in Revelation chapter 14, the 104,000 fulfilled in chapter 7 is standing at Mount Zion. And they are those who have been harvested and sealed, right? Yes, it is so. So the song they sing is a new song, right? It is not the old song. And Jerusalem is also the new Jerusalem. So these words of this revelation are now called songs. It was said that no one can sing the song 
except the 104,000. So wouldn't it be better for pastors to sing this song? This song, Truth, not lies. Revelation as is. Even the words up to the reality that has been fulfilled. The word of testimony. This is the new song. He said that only the 104,000 can sing the new song. Isn't this so? A new song came out when Jesus took the book to Revelation 5 and came out. It wasn't the previous song. That is why the new song is to learn and teach the words of Revelation. Yes, this is so. So now, after chapter 12 and chapter 13, Satan came to the tabernacle of heaven and put a mark on the forehead and hand, right? So pastors, who were the recipients of that mark? What's their name? And what is the name of the person who put a mark on their forehead and hand? Do you know this person? I saw and heard everything that took place on that time, on that day. Otherwise, this person is also a liar. Yes. This book of Revelation cannot be testified to without seeing the reality. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 8, it is said that I, John, am the one who saw these things. It is not anyone else. That one person saw it at all. So this is the reason I came to say this. Then, if we go to chapter 15, those who overcome in chapter 12 gather there in chapter 15. Where is it? Since they are gathered by the sea of glass, isn't the sea of glass in front of the throne of God in Revelation chapter 4? They were all gathered before the throne of God. God. But if I had to say anything about it, it was a place where all nations would come and worship. It is said that the place where the one overcomes is, is in front of the throne of God, and that this is where all nations will come and worship. All believers who care life and faith must come and worship in front of the throne of God where the one who overcomes is. Moreover, in verse 5, this place is referred to as a temple, the tabernacle, the testimony. So what is being testified to must receive the testimony from those who have seen and heard the events of the book of Revelation. You won't know unless you hear the testimony from them. Even though the Bible tells us this, if we do not listen, we cannot go to heaven. Pastors, what do all of you think? Now that I know everything, don't I need to know all these things before I can eat? This book of Revelation is a law and the fruit of eternal life. That's why I said it shouldn't be added or subtracted. Do all of you understand now? We must throw away individualism and obey God's will. Wouldn't that be the case? So in chapter 15, those who overcame are bulls. The word of judgment was received. And the angels took those who overcome, who contained the wrath of God, and went to Revelation chapter 16, and went to the place where the betrayers are, where the destroyers are, and poured it out on them. Satan's kingdom, Satan's world, and judgment was given. So Babylon was destroyed. And the victory, because these people in chapters 15 and 12 fought and won, the victory belongs to God. Yes, this is so. Now I would like to end here. There are a few more things. But even if I don't say anything, pastors, you know very well. So I don't think there's any need to say more. Now, the word given to all of you today, put this in the Bible and check it again. If not, please tell me no. This person has seen and heard it. So I know all the betrayers in the book of Revelation, what their faces are, what their names are. 
Also, the destroyers of this book of Revelation, I know what they look like. I know their names as well. Yes, this is so. Also, in the seven messengers that Jesus appointed, I know their faces, I know their names, and I know them well. How can you testify without seeing? This was shown and was told to testify, which is why it is being testified to all of you. Even if one dies while testifying, can we not say that we will not speak the word of God or not? This cannot be. The truth should be told as is. Yes, pastors, we all carried out life and faith, placing our hope in heaven. All of you have worked so hard to teach the word. I know this well. God has sealed it, so who knows? Myself and all of you are the same because this person was given the word to eat and shown all that has been accomplished. I have told you what this person has seen and heard. Let's all believe in God's word. Go to heaven together so that we can discuss about today. Wouldn't that be the case? So this person has the same Bible and the same hope in God, Jesus, and heaven with all of you. Yes, this is so. Shouldn't we all become one in our hope and go to heaven? Let's go together, I believe. Let me shout what one thing. Let's shout together. Be one in God. Be one in Jesus. Which is why we are one. Yes, thank you very much. I believe everyone's received much grace from these words today. Please give another round of applause to God and Chairman who gave us these precious words of life. Let's offer up a prayer of gratitude to God the Creator who allowed us this time for us to perceive the true meaning of the Bible. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us to receive the important words of promise written across the Old and New Testaments given through our Chairman, who is a messenger of Jesus. Please seal these words deeply in our hearts and also add perception to our minds. We ask that you guide all of us to the purpose of our faith which is heaven, salvation, and eternal life, so we can all become the people of heaven. Please remember every hand who's worked hard for this online seminar and all those who attended with sincere hearts and add even more of your grace of heaven upon them. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We've heard some important contents from the Old and New Testaments today, which can be found in Zion Christian Mission Center, which is the educational leg of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. You can see the overall educational content through our elementary, intermediate, and advanced courses in the official YouTube channel of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. I hope you watch them and understand to grow in faith that is true. If you have more questions about today's seminar, Shincheonji Church of Jesus, or our teaching, please call the main phone numbers of our tribes you see on the screen. We'll make sure to guide you kindly in detail. We'll conclude today's seminar of the prophecy and fulfillment of the Old and New Testaments by offering up the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread Forgive us our debts, as we have also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Thank you for being with us.